Hello everyone. <clears throat> In this video, I'm going to speak about the upcoming eclipse season. I did this in my last video with my friend Wilderness Dawn. So in that video, I spoke about it from the ground up, looking at all the different components of this eclipse, this next one in particular, and kind of putting it all together. I'm going to be a little more nuanced in this video and speak about this eclipse season from a much broader long-term perspective. So looking at some of the cycles that are unfolding now, and tuning into what's happening within the context of a larger evolutionary process. Where I wanna start is by pointing out something regarding Pluto. So let's just take a look at the eclipse chart. This is the upcoming solar eclipse, which here in California is Wednesday evening. So we have Pluto in Aquarius. Take note and actually, you know, let me animate this chart. Take a look at this Pluto as we move between this eclipse and then the next eclipse two weeks later, which will be a lunar eclipse, Pluto stations retrograde. Also, Mercury stations retrograde just a day after this coming eclipse, a little bit later this week. This is significant in the sense that eclipses happen within six month windows. Okay, so let's just look at the next eclipse season about six months later, right? This will always be when the new moon and the full moon happen on either of the nodes. Take a look at Pluto right now, retrograde. We're approaching a solar eclipse. Pluto stations direct just a few days before the next solar eclipse in this cycle right so in the 2023 cycle and this is actually quite interesting just the timing of it all pretty much perfectly from this eclipse april may season till the one that will happen in october and yeah it's october and i think it's just in october pluto is retrograde for like 96% of the time, something like that. So this is a sandwich. This is an eclipse sandwich with eclipses on both ends. And Pluto is the peanut butter and jelly. Pluto retrograde is a peanut butter and jelly. And during this Pluto retrograde time, Pluto is squaring the note. And that's why it's a sandwich. I mean, literally Pluto is in the middle of this eclipse window. It's retrograde and it's moving backwards into Capricorn. So this in and of itself is a very rich indication of what we're entering into. We can also speak to Mercury retrograde and Uranus being involved and maybe I'll get there in this video, but I really wanna give attention to Pluto first and foremost. So in general, and I've spoken about this in earlier videos, Pluto squaring the nodes for 2023 is a very essential evolutionary transition. Any planet that comes into that kind of relationship with the nodal axis says it's necessary to bring conscious integration of that planetary function in order to move forward, right? There's like a, a roadblock, an impasse until we can really meet the content of being brought forward by that planet. Pluto itself speaks to that which is deeply and predominantly unconscious. It's the soul work. And Pluto retrograde is a natural evolutionary push to kind of go within and face the content that in, in, in the regular direct motion we wouldn't necessarily be looking at. The rhythm of Pluto direct and Pluto retrograde is it, just like the churning of the, the gunk at the bottom of the pond. It's a part of the process of evolutionary imperative, evolutionary necessity, bringing us to the next level, the next edge of, ooh, that's uncomfortable. Slow down, meet that, go within. So I want to give a moment to speak to Pluto square in the notes in the context of this eclipse season, really this coming eclipse and what phase we're entering into for this whole year. And I would say, looking at this, the Pluto square in the nodes is really highlighted by this eclipse window between now and later on this year. It's like, this is where the, the gem, the essence of it really is. And we can, interestingly enough, the midpoint 
this might be a little much for some of you, but it's just fascinating. The midpoint um, between this eclipse and the next eclipse season in October is, of course, when the sun will be um, between the two. Okay, so we're at the, the very end of Aries, Taurus, Libra, Scorpio. And so the midpoint would be the transition from Cancer to Leo. Pluto retrogrades back into Capricorn and actually gets into its exact square to the nodes just as the sun is directly opposite that. So what that translates to, um, and this makes sense if you think about just the, the nature of this particular sandwich, the midpoint of this entire Pluto squaring the nodes in time also coincides to both the exact square, 90 degree orb, right? 90 degree elongation to both nodes with the sun in exact opposition, creating a, gra a grand cross. This will be in July. So I'm just pointing this out to, to give a, a framework. We're entering into a phase that's going to have an arc and a culmination late July, and then there's going to be another phase that culminates in October. So what are we beginning right now? First and foremost, Pluto stationing retrograde is a time, in particular in Aquarius, where we're faced with change. Fundamentally, it is outside of the context of what we're familiar with. There's no precedent. It's okay not to have a full perspective. And I think it's a thing to understand about Pluto and Pluto retrograde in general and Pluto square in the nodes. This is an evolutionary process that says we haven't been there yet. Any kind of process implies it's something to live through, something to go through, something to experience. And the more we are attached to outcome, the more we're holding on to, oh, but I need it to be this way. I need to have this experience. I need things to work out a certain way. And however I've organized it, the more we will suffer. There's a threshold of power and clarity of really what it looks like to walk with agency and alignment from our power where we're not needing to control. We're not needing to victimize. We're not needing to get stuck in any kind of energetic of separation. Even when things feel very difficult, there is a teaching in this North Node in greater grace, in more relaxation, allowing, trusting, trusting that there's more wisdom, there's more insight here. So Pluto stationing retrograde at this particular juncture says we're going deeper into the underworld. It's just true. We're facing dimensions of self-awareness that we haven't yet gleaned. And let's just appreciate the caterpillar doesn't know what it's like on the other end. And sometimes we need to just trust the process. So let's come back to this particular time because we are also looking at Mercury going retrograde at just the time of this eclipse. So I'm gonna animate this forward a little bit. Here's the eclipse. One day later, boom, Mercury stationing retrograde that next day. Notice it's at 15 degrees. It's approaching Uranus, but not quite at Uranus. Let's move through the remainder of this cycle, right? We're gonna have a full moon, a lunar eclipse around now. At that time, Mercury is still going retrograde. The sun is going to be where Mercury stationed retrograde. And just around the time that we complete this lunar cycle, in fact, just before Jupiter enters Taurus and we have the next new moon, Mercury goes direct. Okay, And that's going to be in May 15th. So from now until mid-May, we have a lot of core transitions. Pluto goes retrograde. We have our first really big, strong eclipse. Mercury goes retrograde, and Jupiter is preparing to enter Taurus. So much going on here. So let's focus on this Mercury going retrograde during this eclipse. If we notice that it's happening very close to Uranus, and the sun during the full moon eclipse is on Uranus as well. The interface between Mercury and Taurus and Uranus says there is uh, content, information, logistics, thoughts, perspectives that are beginning to emerge within our consciousness that by their very nature are a little bit destabilizing, right? They're certainly new and they're not complete. They're not fully uh, played out in our mind. We haven't 
uh, follow the logic all the way through. So it's a very helpful thing to appreciate in terms of what we consciously understand. As Mercury goes retrograde and comes to station direct, it's going to be stationing in a very tight square with this newly retrograde Pluto. Okay, so this whole process of Mercury going retrograde, it's moving and it's culminating at the square with Pluto, and it starts in this conjunction with Uranus, all in the middle of this eclipse season. So, so much new information. What's the point? Stay grounded, allow it all to emerge. Um, this, in a way, speaks to our individuated destiny and our collective destiny and how in our own interrelationships, there's a path unfolding that reflects a greater essential intelligence, Uranus, right? It's like the, the unfolding individuality of life. There can be a lot of stress if we're trying to wrap our mind around it all, and especially with respect to the insecurity of all the change and where things feel hard and we just don't have the psychological awareness or maybe don't feel totally clear in our power. The temptation here with that Mercury and Taurus would be to grab onto something that we know we can grab to, but is just replaying the past, wanting to maintain continuity and security and stability in the known. So this Mercury retrograde during this time with the North Node in Taurus during this eclipse season, all squaring Pluto, is asking us to slow down. It's inviting us to relax and slow down and gather a greater bird's eye perspective grasp a, a greater, broader vantage view point as to what's unfolding long term. And this really means not grasping onto security. The tendency here with Taurus, really, the shadow of it is, I want to feel good and I want to not feel bad, right? No one wants to feel unstable. And so how can we nurture a greater ground of relaxation? How can we nurture a greater ground of stability in the midst of so much change? And again, Mercury, information, perspective, context that is sort of emerging that is new. Appreciate we're going to have new thoughts. We're going to see things that we haven't seen before. We don't need to settle on anything. We don't need to say, this is what I know, and this is how it's going, and this is what it looks like. In fact, during this retrograde, between and even after these two eclipses, we can really allow the, the time to be devoted to being in the process. In the meantime, here's a great reference point. What are some things that you really like doing that's creative, that's engaging, that brings joy, that brings a sense of peace. Like, where's your Zen? This is a part of our evolutionary trajectory right now. It may not seem rational, it may not make a lot of sense, but we might really like doing it. We might like doing it a lot, and it's okay to do that. It's okay to be carving out more space to give yourself more of what you love. It's actually very important right now. Otherwise, it can just feel like an overwhelming amount of stress. And really where life is taking us is towards more of what we love. That's a part of what this evolutionary trajectory is. In fact, paving the road, the bridge from where we are to where we're going is not so much in fighting the change and fighting the things that we have no control over, but giving more and more attention to that which we deeply value that brings us joy, that brings us life. We may not know how it's going to grow roots, how it's all going to organize and sort of calibrate itself. And we don't have to know. We only need to know what we know. And our work is to really explore that edge of greater peace and trust. And I want to just give a little analogy for this that makes it simple. It's always helpful to think of a caterpillar when we're in a deep Plutonian process. Everything's changing. The structures of security and stability that the soul knows is changing because that soul, that beingness, is entering this evolutionary transition. In the end, what's the only thing that would work for this caterpillar, right? Turning towards that which is peaceful, that which is joyful, that which is loving. That might be the song. That might be just spending some time out in nature, looking at the sunset, leaves, 
long walks, reading a book, quietude, baths, Epsom salt, um, running in the forest. There's something that we can just find respite in and relaxation as perhaps some other part of ourself is dying. And there'll come a time where there will be a deep, deep calling to get quiet and to sit in the center of the turmoil, to sit in the center of the hurricane and realize we are not being touched. The caterpillar can find its skin shedding and everything going dark and it's at peace, it's at rest and it becomes very quiet and very still because it knows that love will remain its joy, maybe the form and the way that it's come to know it, but that sense of peace that it found in the in the art, in the sunset, in the forest, like these things are reflecting eternal facets of our being. And we can rest feeling that peace and allowing life to take us to the new stage. This is the wisdom of that Taurus Scorpio axis, that stillness in the midst of so much change. Very often we become possessive of the way things are and how things are structured and organized in our life. Um, so much so that we think we need it. Identity always does that, right? It's like, well, I, if I don't have this, I won't exist. If I don't have this, if, if I'm going to lose this or if this changes, on a fundamental level, I will not be okay. And we just have to meet that sometimes. It's not easy. Knowing all of this doesn't exempt us from the grieving process. It doesn't exempt us from the challenges or the difficulties of facing the parts of ourselves that are going to have to die, right? And it's simply always the truth that on the other end of that, there's a lot more power and the truth of evolution is we are far more powerful in our essence, in our being than we know. And if it wasn't for evolutionary timing, we really wouldn't make a lot of changes on our own because we're too darn comfortable. It's just how it is. So <clears throat> I want to close this video sharing a little song with you all. And I'm going to turn my camera to the piano. We give thanks to Great Spirit to carry us through we give thanks to Great Spirit that carries us through. And we trust in this moment for all that we need. And we trust in this moment for being enough. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, oh. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, ho. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, oh. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, ho. 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 And we heal one another with the songs of our hearts. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. Yes, we heal one another with the songs of our hearts. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. Hey ya, 
We give thanks to Great Spirit to carry us through. We give thanks to Great Spirit that carries us through. May the tight squeeze of this eclipse season squeeze us into more of our bliss, more into our joy, more unshakably, because when things are hard, really, it's like, what are we going to do with our life in the end? What's most important? Thank you for watching.